Hello friends, this is your friend, Evan Aldo. <laughs> What's up? I always like that intro. Um, so yeah guys, I wanted to show you what I've been doing kind of in my Discord. And um, yeah, I wanted to give you an update on Bitcoin, um, Ethereum, talk about the Bitcoin dominance a little bit, you know, the usual. And uh, yeah, um, so this is, and if you enjoy the content, leave a like. If you're new, subscribe. So yeah, this is what I've been doing. Bitcoin swing short, this did pretty well. Bitcoin scalp short, this did pretty well. Both of them were stopped out of after the first take profit, but you know, still so money is money. Um, you always want to hit more than one take profit, but that's that. They're still profitable trades, so take what you can get. If you guys are interested in the Discord link in description below, um, you're not going to get double charged on the first anymore. Patreon like updated their things, so you're just going to get charged every 30 days. You can set up whenever. So check that out if you're interested. I do a lot of you know analysis macro stuff too. Um, we do have a pretty good community, so check it out if you're interested. Link down below. And, you know, the main thing here, I think I was talking about it last night. I mean, you're, the fact that a lot of people, CNBC articles going to 100K, everybody and their brother on Twitter, you know, a million in three months. I heard somebody say 10 million. I heard, you know, someone say 10 trillion. You know, no, I'm just kidding. But, you know, it's indicative that a lot, it doesn't mean that you can't pump up to 40K here. It doesn't mean that. That's kind of the highest I could see us going, unless things get really crazy. But it doesn't mean you can't pump up higher, but that means probably a lot of the move is over. You know, it's kind of like when you see those big articles, it's kind of like where Tesla bought, you know, and I think Tesla bought back here, right? It was a January 21. Like, so it doesn't mean you missed that. It doesn't mean the move is necessarily over, but it means a lot of it is because it means you're not going to get, you're probably not going to get another 800%, but you could get some scraps maybe, you know, another 86 or something. Like here, I mean, you're probably not going to get another, you know, 80, 80, 90 percent, but you could get maybe potentially if we if this isn't the top here, 30K or 29, 28K isn't the top, maybe another 40 percent, I think, potentially. And if you look at here in terms of the money flow last time, you know, we were at this point, you had another jump up. That would be the case for kind of 40K here. I believe if you go back to 2015, it was kind of similar in that aspect as well. I could actually let me show you here um, on the Bitstamp chart. Because this is interesting, how just how similar it is. Maybe I'm just, you know, overanalyzing and thinking something different has to happen. But if you look at blue triangle, green dot, you did have another, you know, another kind of. This is a much different time. But in terms of right there, I mean, you did a kind of another jump up. This is like more similar, like kind of there, another jump up. So maybe that would be, you know, kind of another jump up, and then you consolidate for a while, come back down as potential. But potentially, what could happen? But 40k, I think, is kind of the main main number that I would say is a a good time to potentially potentially look to get out and short. But yeah, you know, right here you just keep coming. But if it's like this, you got a little bit more. This could be different. There could be a curveball, you know, recession, all of that. Um, so that's what we're looking at there. And if you look at the two week here, I wanted to show you guys the two week, um, which is kind of interesting because blood diamond, blood diamond, look at where the money flow is too, just as money flow coming out that blood diamond. Here we didn't get it. You know, here we were saying it was coming down with your VWAP, it just curved back up. But I think eh, it would depend. Yeah, it's a little bit, it would depend. But I think if you come down pretty quickly, like come down to 20K or something, you would get that that blood diamond there which would probably be unless you get a real curveball with the recession would probably be a potential bottom <laughs> if, if history kind of repeats itself here so that's what the look that's something to look at also the thing here to look at as well is the three week money flow almost came out you know back here right before kind of this rally started almost came into the red now you're back in the green this it's due to come into the red you know that's due to come into the red the monthly is due to come into the red as well these EMAs are due to turn all gray, you know, similar to NASDAQ after the dot-com bubble. So those things are due. Now, you don't need to necessarily make a lower low um, to do that. You could, you know, do something of this nature. Let's just see here. And then, um, well, maybe a little, yeah, towards the end of the year, coming to the red. So, I mean, it would be something like, yeah, something like this or something, maybe a double bottom, maybe just down to 20K or... Or you come up higher, you come up with a 40 or something, and then towards the end of the year, maybe into early next year, you come down and bottom out. Now, this could be more of an elongated kind of, I mean, for traditional markets, definitely. I don't know about Bitcoin, but this could be more of an elongated, you know, bear market for traditional markets. And let me just show you um, why that could be just really quickly here on, let me just get up the uh, the Dow Jones on, uh, I wanted to show you, this was interesting, the 16 day here. 
And look at the Blood Diamond. Look at the last time we've even encountered these. You had three there, really choppy. And then in terms of money flow, you're kind of right either here or here. You know what I mean? And then if it's, let's just say it's like this one to, to a bottom here for the Dow. This is going to, I think I already drew it out, but let's just, um, oh my, <laughs> wow. May of 2024 down in kind of that area and that would be indicative of what you see a lot of times in recessions just more of a you know extended <laughs> kind of an extended um, way down for traditional markets now there could be you know there could be something of that nature happening um, so we'll, we'll have to you know, keep our eyes open we'll have to wait and see and you know right now we're looking at the i don't want to show you guys like the three so you didn't really have this was um not really a yeah, price making, yeah, not really a bearish div here, but the next red dot is going to actually be a bearish div on your three-day. Money flow is still looking kind of strong. Nothing curving down just yet. So, yeah, but you're hitting double spiral lines. This next bearish div could definitely bring you down a good amount. You know, maybe down to 25 back to test the 200 weekly. Same thing with the two-day. Money flow is still kind of strong, but that view is coming down. You're going to get a pretty decent size bearish div right there. Daily looks pretty bearish still. Um, this could roll over back into the green, give us catalyst to 40k, but daily still is on the bear side. If you look at some of the middle time frames here, um, these would kind of give you the catalyst to not really the eight. Yeah, yeah, still not money flow is not going down. You know, confirm the green dot. It'd be the catalyst to break through this. You know, test the 30s, maybe even go higher here. That'd be the catalyst to break through. Green dot there. It's catalyst to break through. It's a case to break through. And the, the, the four hour right there, money flow coming out. You did have the trigger wave. That didn't give you much yet, at least. But with the money flow coming out, now you're going to get another red dot. That could be a trigger wave on the other side. That could potentially potentially bring you down a good amount. Where I'm looking to potentially enter a, a new short is the 90 minute crossing back kind of into the red here is where I'm going to be looking. Four hour as well with these EMAs that have been bright for a while. Once these start turning gray, that's a good place to look for shorts. Um, especially if they start, you know, we do something, I don't know, of, uh, of this nature, they start turning gray over here. That'd be a good indication we're going to come back down to 25K. So keep an eye on that. And yeah, two hours as well, 30 minute, you know, 15 minute, eh, just choppy here, not seeing too much, which is, you know, we saw the big kind of big move here. We're still in kind of the channel for now. Coming into the weekend, weekends are always a bit harder to trade. There's always you know, weird sideways volatility. So, you know, I always say be more careful on the weekends. So maybe we'll see more sideways on the weekends. We'll see more of an outcome um, early next week, I think. So keep that keep that in mind. Um, and let's move on to ETH, you know, a little bit. We're still in the, the triangle right there. ETH is interesting on the weekly here because it's a little bit different than Bitcoin. And we're in this environment where Bitcoin just keeps, you know, outperforming everything. Look at the Bitcoin dominance, 47%. That's high. And I think it's going to probably go even higher. But if you look at right here in terms of this money flow, look at kind of what happened in terms of this money flow. You weren't even, you know what I mean? By the time you got close, you were kind of almost at the top here. I mean, maybe we have another jump up. Bitcoin goes to 40K. Maybe this just goes up to 23K because it's been lagging, you know, lagging behind 24K because it's been lagging behind so much. That's a possibility. Also... The other thing too, if we have kind of a you know, trajectory down like this or something, let's just, let's see from, I don't know, from up here, say this was the top trajectory down. Yeah, you'd get some type of like double bottom towards the summer trajectory down. I think the summer is going to be, you know, I think if we do pump with 40K, it's going to be in the next two months probably. You'll probably see it in April or May, probably May. Sell in May, walk away. Maybe that could be the case this year. Then you get a big lull in the summer towards the end of the summer, you know, middle to end of summer is your good kind of buying opportunity. That could be a good place um, to look as well. So that's what we're looking at right there on the macro on ETH. You know, same thing, top of the trend, you know, top of the triangle. You know, this is more of a traditional kind of like, does it break out? Does it not? You know what I mean? You do have a crazy high technical target at 4,300 if it breaks upward. Keep in mind, I'm not the biggest traditional TA guy. I would be well look, looking looking well below this for potential tops. You know, 28, you know, 32 if you even make it that high. I think 24 is a big area. I mean, we haven't even hit this spiral line at 19 um, yet, so let's not get too ahead of ourselves. And yeah, I mean, green dot after the red dot there. It looks like you're kind of nullifying that a little bit. It looks like you may have a little bit more of a jump up. The thing here too, money flow very choppy, doesn't really tell us, tell us much there. 
But if you look at the four hour, money flow coming down, VWAP coming down at the same time, four hour is a good indication of a potential trend reversal. This could be, you know, the kind of the trend reversal right there for, you know, for both Bitcoin and Ethereum right now. So keep that, keep that in mind. Um, more patient on trading Ethereum right now. I think I do have a swing trade, swing short in from before. That's not doing as well as I would have hoped, but um, ultimately with what I was seeing on, you know, on the charts at the time, what I'm seeing right now, I mean, I do think the 90 minute may kind of curve over a two hour may curve back over into the red and give us kind of what we need there. So I'm still gonna keep it in for now. Um, so we looked at, you know, we looked at the Dow um, and Bitcoin dominance, a little bit of a kind of pullback here, which is why ETH kind of made a higher high today, um, while Bitcoin, while Bitcoin did not. Um, which that's because yeah, with Bitcoin dominance. When Bitcoin's away, ETH comes out, and then after when ETH's away and Bitcoin's away, what comes out at and after? It's usually the the altcoins. I don't know if we'll see it that this time because the main you know fear is in stable coins, government regulation, more money pe being put into Bitcoin. So. Yeah, I mean, that's what, that's what we're looking at right now, but nothing's going to go up, you know, straight up or hit and see this major point for Bitcoin dominance. It would make sense to come back at least a little bit here. It makes sense to come back at least a little bit. And then you could see some altcoins run. The thing with altcoins, though, is I'm, I'm pretty, you know, I, I think ultimately the best time to buy altcoins is going to be like middle to later this year. Um, but it, it is possible they could run a little bit. The reason I think they might not, though, is you didn't even get above kind of your your February highs here of you know 41 cents here like on Cardano so and then you're coming into the green green there last time up and you just came right down so there are a lot of paths downward to like 15 cents kind of these areas for Cardano I mean there still is we might get a curveball with the recession here we kind of don't know how the market's going to react to that we're still not even in one which is kind of crazy um that we were able to delay it so far you know it was able to be delayed this much so i think you could get a curveball especially hitting the alts hard and i think there's still a decent shot at six six eth at 600 you know cardano at 15 cents and a lot of these trajectories downward for for the altcoins so keep that in mind you could have a curve curveball towards the end of the year that's why i think you know not financial advice but I don't think it makes a lot of sense to be fumbling in right now. I think the best path that makes a lot of sense is DCing into Bitcoin starting now or, you know, whenever you started and stopping towards the end of the year into maybe January. So that's what I'm looking at right now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. That's all I got. Please leave a like. Please subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the Discord down below. Check out the exchanges down below if you're interested in trading. If you sign up to any of the exchanges down below and deposit at least $100, I'll give you one free month in the exclusive discord to shoot me a dm with your uid on discord or tag me in one of the channels and i'll get you sorted all right guys have a good one goodbye